And in the column on the left side, almost always, what you'll see are the degrees of freedom. And it goes from a degree of freedom as small as 1 all the way to infinity. Now, usually they just stop at about degrees of freedom of 120 because it doesn't make much difference to go beyond that in terms of what your critical t values are going to be. So in this case, the degrees of freedom were, est were calculated at 34, and the column only goes up in increases from 30 to 40 once you get to that level. So because 34 is closer to 30, I chose 30 as my degrees of freedom rather than 40 in terms of the table. Now they just, it's only because they want a more compact table that they don't have degrees of freedom for 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, up to 40. You have to uh, make some decisions at some point to make it more compact. So degrees of freedom of 30 is what I'm choosing even though the degrees of freedom are really 34. And it's only because most textbooks do not specify at that level of specification. Now I've identified 0 0.05 in the row at the top because that's my alpha level. And it says proportion and two tails combined because I'm doing a two tail test, not a one tail test. As I mentioned, that's a separate issue uh, that mo that's more advanced than just learning the independent sample t test. Just learn the basics of the two tail test. So now that I've ident identified the row of 30 and the column of 0 0.05, I just need to find the point where those two values intersect. And in this case, it's 2.042. And this is my critical t value for this analysis. So with degrees of freedom of 34, but I actually chose 30 because I have to. I have to choose something a bit closer uh, to what's actually rep represented in the t table. An alpha level of 0 0.05, I've got my critical t value. I am nearly finished this analysis. So critical t value is equal to 2.042. Now I've done something important here. I've put the 2.042 in brackets. And that means absolute value. The t table doesn't have negative values. And again, that's just for compactness. In reality, there are negative values in the t distribution. But textbooks just report positive values but they actually rep represent both negative and positive. So when you put brackets around a number, that means absolute value. And absolute means either positive or negative. So in this case, the critical t value is equal to either negative 2.042 and 2.042, both positive and negative. So is the calculated t value greater than the absolute value of 2.042? Recall that the calculated t value that I got from the independent sample t test formula is 3.07. So 3.07 is greater than the critical t value of 2.02. So this, therefore, the null hypothesis can be rejected. This critical t value represents what you might expect simply by chance uh, up to 5% of the time. In this case, we've got a, cr a calculated 3.047, and it is definitely larger than 2.042. So, conclusions. With respect to the null hypothesis, do smokers and non-smokers have equal brain volumes? No, they do not. The null hypothesis of equal mu's, that means in the population, can be rejected, p less than 0.05. The alternative hypothesis which is stating that the mu's are unequal can be accepted, p less than 0 0.05. Therefore, the alternative hypothesis of unequal mu's, unequal brain volumes in the population, can be accepted. Now, I mentioned here, sometimes people say things like, therefore, the null hypothesis of equal means can be rejected. And theoretically, that's not quite right. You need to still frame your hypotheses in population terms, not mean, t not in terms of means, but many people write that. Uh, don't be confused. They're making a slight error. Uh, you can try to correct them if you want. You'll probably win a lot of friends doing so. Uh, but when they say it, I think they mean population, but they're just stuck with thinking of means. And to be honest, even I do it sometimes. Uh, 
This is another way of saying it. Th therefore, the alternative hypothesis of equal means can be accepted. 